So the objectives of this video are to set up Pro Tools hardware and software for recording audio, create and configure a click track, record audio onto tracks in a session, recognize clips and whole file clips, and organize clips and files after recording. So uh, probably always a good idea to ensure that you've got enough hard disk space before recording. And we have uh, a window, we have a window and down here to disk usage. And we could just check the amount of space available uh, on our device. I've got a, a 500 gig drive. I've got 80 gig available, 17%. And here we see that time in minutes at 44.124 bit. Now obviously the more drives, then the more drives are showing here. So always good to check before you start recording. If I firstly wanted to set up a click track, I go to track and create click track. That's just showing there. If I go to my mix window, which is command plus, I can see my click track here and it appears as a plugin. If I wanted to change any of the uh, default settings, if I go to setup this time and click count off, I get this window. And as you can see, this allows me to modify some of the settings. So for example, the click is set to play during play and record, but you can set it to click just during record only or even just during count off, as in, uh, as in you get the count in and then the track will start playing and the, the, the click track will stop. So you can adjust that as you wish. The BPM will obviously follow the BPM of the sequence, which is 120 at the moment. And I can change the click accents here and here. Over here to the left, I already have a audio channel set up. I got that by going to Command Shift N and then choosing a mono audio track. And I can see it's an audio track because it's got a, a record function. And when I click that, that means that that's record enabled. And before I start recording, I need to check a few other things. Firstly, I need to check my input path. So where's the sound coming from? Where's the input coming from? And I'm actually just obviously using a microphone to record my voice. So I've just set that to the, it's a stereo mic, so I've just set to the left hand side of that mic. And I'm just giving it a, a bus output because I don't really need to hear the output. If you're using a stereo output, you'll see output is stereo. Or if you're using multi-tracks in a recording studio, you'll see multiple outputs. And usually, everything would we would work in line so if a microphone was plugged into channel one then the input would be channel one the output would be channel one and that would appear on channel one of the mixing console however if you're working in the box everything's done to stereo out or everything's done to stereo output and that would just say stereo one and two once i've configured the inputs and outputs i then need to obtain a, a strong clear input signal without clipping and there's a number of things I'd need to check obviously the player, the instrument, the microphone, uh, ensuring that the signal going into the system is um, without noise and then pre-amplification to amplify that signal and as a rule of thumb Pro Tools in any software actually we usually see a green going into an orange going into a red. So it's just like a traffic light system. Green is good, orange beware, red is clipping. So just aim for the top of the green, regardless of what the meters say, because meters can say different things. Just aim for the top of the green, and that will give you a decent level going in. You know, if it's going in too hot, if you can't, i.e. if you can't control the signal, then you need to go back to source, maybe turn down the amplifier or put a pad on the microphone uh, then adjust your gain signal, check to see if there's a pad on the on the um, mixing console uh, so that you get nice control over this signal. And then of course 
we can use the volume fader to adjust the playback and monitoring levels and it, this does not affect the record level this only affects playback level and we have a pan control here so we can we can pan but again that only affects what we hear uh, when we monitor during playback it doesn't affect the recording signal if I go back to my mix win uh, my um, uh, edit window uh, it's going to call the track audio one because that's what it's called here that's never a good idea just to leave it as audio one because uh, it means if everybody did that we'd have a lot of tracks on our system called audio one and if I go down to here I've now put the track into uh, record ready it's record enabled and if I was to press play start recording there are a couple of uh, other shortcuts to start recording uh, if I was to go to command and space bar on, as I'm on a Mac that will start recording but because I've got that set up with uh, access to spotlight search I'll get spotlight so the other way is to use my F uh, controls at the top of my keyboard and F12 uh, drops it into record for me when I stop that drops out of record that's still record enabled I'll take that out of record enabled and I should see over here in my clip window that's that recording from earlier So there's a recording from earlier, so I'm just going to select and I'm going to go to clear. And it says if I remove the selected clips from the session, um, I can move them to trash or I can actually delete them where they'll be deleted permanently, i.e. I can't undo it. So I'm just going to move those to trash. So they're still on my hard drive, but they're no longer in the project. And there's my two drum recordings that I've just done. These are, uh, because I'm recording uh, in uh, mono, they're just showing up as mono files. But if they were stereo, um, then and I was to click on this icon here, or sorry, there'd be an icon here, I would see it being represented as a left and right signal. So because it's mono, it's not left and right, but if it was stereo, it would be represented as left and right, and there would be a disclosure triangle here. So we have two types of clip files we have whole clip files which are an entire unedited and continuous audio recording and these are shown in boldface type but if I was now to just take a, a selection of that and then to copy it somewhere else and just double clip it just give it another name that now is a subset clip which is an edited piece of the original recording and that's shown in normal typeface in the clip list if I want to rename a file I can double click it I get this window and I can uh, name the clip only or name clip and this file so rename the whole thing like so all I did there was just to double click, type in the new name and click OK. And as I've shown you just now, if I wanted to remove a clip, a select it, I go to this disclosure triangle, clear, and then either move to trash, remove the selected clip from the session, or delete permanently. If I delete permanently, it's gone forever.